Hello, Wonder Hussy here. Welcome to day three of what's was supposed to be a four day expedition into the wilds of Nevada. But I think I might actually be in California at this location. Hard to tell. I'm right at that uh, mysterious borderlands region. There is hardly anything out here other than <laughs> scrubby little bushes, the occasional Joshua tree, the occasional abandoned ranch, and <laughs> this little cabin. Now, I don't remember how I found out about this cabin or who tipped me off to its existence, but huh, one thing's for sure, I probably never would have found it just driving around. I mean, look at how freaking desolate this country is. Now, unfortunately, the front door is wide open, so that doesn't bode well as far as it having any creature comforts goes. But I'm not expecting creature comforts, at least not in the traditional sense of creature comforts. All the comforts I need are in my rig and, well, out here in nature. So this cabin can be as busted up as it wants to, and I'm probably still gonna like it. Okay, before we go in, just a little look around the grounds. Oh, look, here's an old headlight. <laughs> Not even shattered, how about that? Here's one of them real old Coors cans where you had to punch the little second hole to get airflow. Oh my goodness, what was this? Like, is this one of those old hair dryers? Like ladies used to have those bonnets they put on their head, and then it had that long hose. I think the bonnet attached to this end, you put it over your curlers when they were wet. And then this was like a hose that came from the heating element. I mean, isn't that what that is? <laughs> that's where the plug came out. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. Oh, look, here's the little Westinghouse logo from it. It was probably a Westinghouse hairdryer bonnet. Okay, wow, that helps me paint a picture, a pretty vivid picture <laughs> of who lived here. It was either some guy who dragged his poor wife out here to this godforsaken country and forced her to live out here. Or it was some dude who really wanted to take care of his perm. And I have known men who have had perms before, so to be honest, I wouldn't really be surprised. Uh, it's always fun to pick through the trash pile and try to imagine who sipped coffee out of this cup. Could have been the same lady who had that uh, bonnet on her curlers, sat there waiting for her hair to dry, sipping coffee. Maybe she put a little whiskey in it because, well, she was bored out of her gourd living out here and her husband made her come out here. Or, you know, if we go with the theory that it was the guy's hair dryer bonnet, well, maybe he drank coffee and whiskey while he was setting his curls. And who knows, man, maybe he liked to dress up in women's clothes and that's why he moved way out here to the middle of nowhere where no one could judge him. Just a theory. Okay, let's go inside this cabin. Dun, dun, dun. Like I said, doors blown wide open and it is a mess in here, just kind of like how I thought it would be. Ugh, that's a lot of rat poo. I don't even want to breathe in here. Oh, yikers. Okay, so it was a one room cabin. Somebody slept on this. Oh gosh, look at the bed frame construction. That's kind of interesting. It's set up on, well, on that side, it's set up on a wooden block. On this side, it's on an old gas can or kerosene can. And then there's just a pile of rat poo holding it up on the back side. Oh my goodness, look at that. What a disgusting mess. Look, there's some clothes left hanging on the wall. Wow, it's like whoever lived here just took off without even taking their clothes. And look at these clothes. This looks very 1970s. Oh my goodness. It's a two-piece ensemble. This is, okay, this is actually really boss. Look at the buttons on this thing. A little nautical emblem. Oh, so it's a pair of polyester slacks with this sort of herringbone weave. I know the light's kind of bad because the window's right there. Herringbone weave polyester slacks with this amazing vest with these nautical buttons on the pockets. Okay, that just screams salty sea captain. Now, oh, okay, I'm developing an image in my mind of who wore that outfit. I mean, I can imagine you would, you would accessorize it with like a blue button down shirt under that vest with like one of those ascot ties, you know, so that you look like you were at sea. And then of course you'd have a, your, your cap, you know, your captain's hat and a pipe. What's behind it? Oh, I thought this was like a crown royal bag, but oh, it's another, it's a sweater vest. It's a purple sweater vest with kind of like 
gold trim. Interesting. It's just a cr Crown Royal themed sweater vest. And then, oh, look behind it. One more sweater vest. Whoever lived here really liked sweater vests. Unfortunately, none of this stuff has labels on it. So curious. Okay, these slacks do have a tag. What does this say? Oh my God, look, 100% polyester. Yeah, no kidding. Graf California wear. Well, I did say we were in California. Okay, so judging from the clothing, I'm gonna go ahead and date the last inhabitant of this place to the 1970s. I know some people are behind the time, so maybe 1980s. Let's just see, there's, there's quite a few newspapers on the floor that we'll go through and maybe we can confirm or change that. There's one more. Oh, it's a dress. There's a polyester dress. Oh, okay, this I have to take down. This is amazing. I used to love wearing all this old vintage uh, stuff of my mom's. My mom had a lot of really cool old vintage dresses and clothes from earlier than this. Like, and first of all, my mom had better taste than these hideous polyester things. My mom was more of a hippie, but I used to wear all her old clothes. And then I got into a, a phase where I would go to this thrift store in when I lived in San Jose, California, there was this amazing thrift store that had all kinds of crazy old 70s clothes. And I used to buy the most hideous polyester outfits and wear them. Okay. <laughs> okay, I went ahead and just hung this dress up from the ceiling. <laughs> so it'll give someone an ungodly fright, uh, the next person who comes into this cabin. But look at this dress. Like I said, it's 100% pure polyester, hideous pattern, hideous colors, pure 1970s. It has a pretty nice little sash. Well, I was gonna say there was definitely a woman living here, but then again, uh, with my theory on the curlers, it could have been a cross-dressing guy. I mean, there could have been some dude who put on that dress. And matter of fact, look over here, there's a really nice pocketbook that he probably wore or carried around with the dress. Let's see if there's anything in the pocketbook. Oh, there we go. What's inside this pocketbook? A thousand scorpions, spiders. Oh, look, you can even still see the name of it. What does it say? I'm not sure you can read that. Spilling. Nice pocketbook. Oh, I mean, wouldn't it be wild if there was like a hundred dollar bill in here? I'd leave it right there, but there's nothing in here. But this would be a smart uh, pocketbook with that dress. Wouldn't that be a nice look? Put a whole outfit together in here. Okay, wow, there is just so much going on in this cabin that <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna go methodical. I'll go counterclockwise from the door that we walked in. Okay, so there's the door, obviously there's the bed. We already looked at the clothes hanging on the thing, but on the floor, there's a couple boxes. What does this say? Rita Donahue. Oh, maybe that was the woman's name who lived here. Rita Donahue. That was Rita Donahue's dress and Rita Donahue's pocketbook. And I guess maybe Rita Donahue's hair drying bonnet. What do we have here? Prevention Magazine, September 1986. Okay, so it was a case of somebody just being behind the times. There's some fabric and stuff in here, but I don't know that I really want to go through it because it's so gross and old. Shoe polish. Oh, she cared enough about her shoes. Like a fashion icon in here. Rita, what happened to you? And then I noticed over here too on the floor, there was, um, <clears throat> this was an apron, a checkered kitchen apron. So she probably put that on when she was cooking up her meals for her prospector husband, or maybe she was the prospector herself. I don't know though. This is a man's boot. Look, in this box, there's a boot. That's obviously the sign that a man lived here. And then these little booties, is that, that's not the same size. So these must've been Rita's booties. Oh, look at that. They're still together in the same box. What's this? Oh, this looks like a religious pamphlet. My life is the passion. A Short Way of the Cross by Walter Sullivan. Okay, so she was a woman of Christ. That's good to know. Oh, it's a shopping bag from a store called, oh, Scolari's Warehouse Markets. I know where there used to be a Scolari's. That's kind of a weird uh, chain of grocery stores, I guess, or I don't know if it's a chain. The only one I've ever seen was in Tonopah, Nevada, which, I guess as the crow flies, isn't that far from here. And we're out in the middle of nowhere, so maybe that was the closest grocery store they had to drive through? That's wild. Well, then I look here. There's some ads on the back of the bag that say Sparks, like Sparks, Nevada, and that's up by Reno. Reno Chamber Orchestra presents Handel's Messiah. Yeah, uh, maybe there was a Scolari's in Reno too back then. Mmm, there's an old, well, there's a soup can that doesn't look that old. There's a Frisky's cat food can, so I guess she had a cat. There's a real old piece of a newspaper. Okay, I unfolded that uh, paper and it was an ad for a grocery store. So, 
I don't know what year it was from, but it was 19 cents for a loaf of bread. 69 cents for a six pack of Coca-Cola in the bottle. Wow, I love this. Uh, warehouse markets, effective, oh, price is effective November 6th through November 12th, 1985. So it is 90s or 80s. Okay, so Rita was living here at least up until 86 is what that uh, other thing said. Uh, there's a bunch of newspapers over here. As we move along, we're coming along. There's a, uh, oh, doesn't that look like a Christmas wreath hung on the wall? Well, that's kind of interesting because uh, that ad for the, on that grocery bag was for Handel's Messiah. The Reno Orchestra was doing Handel's Messiah, so it must have been Christmas time when she left. Oh no, I wonder what could have happened. Oh boy, did she ever have a cat? I mean, look at that. That's a giant pile of cat food bags, the really big kind of dry kibble bags. Alley Cat brand, I remember this. It's like the cheap bargain cat food. Like if you really don't care, you just want to give your cat any old crap to shut it up. Okay, well, we've already pretty well established this uh, date to 1980. Oh, look, this is the September 29th, 1976. How about that? Y'all remember 1976? Oh my God, those were the good old days. Oh my God, I don't know if they were so good. Look at the ad for the uh, tapes and records. <laughs> the Carpenters. Why do birds suddenly appear? Barry Manilow. This one's for you, wherever you are. <laughs> I'm actually a pretty big fan of Lowe, I gotta be honest. And I'm a huge Carpenters fan. Oh my God, Karen Carpenter. What a queen. Captain and Tennille, Earth, Wind and Fire, Aerosmith. Okay, man, forget what I said. Look, War Greatest Hits. Music was awesome back then. Neil Diamond, oh my God. I can't say enough good things about Neil Diamond. I'm a huge fan of all these artists. Look over here, CB Radio, $79.99. Oh, look at this. Texas Instruments Calculator with memory. $9.99, wasn't that expensive back in 76? That was a lot of money. Cassette recorder, oh my God, I think I actually had one of those, like that same style. Oh, now I really feel old. Short and sassy. Oh, Sesame Street, love it. Oh my God, look at the bikes back then. Now that's when bikes were bikes. Oh, look, here's the old time camping gear. There's your old cooler, your old lantern, stove, Sleeping bag or sleep bag. I guess they didn't call them sleeping bags back then. Uh, oh my God, look. Ha! <laughs> Fawn's novelty towel. Hey, hey, now talk about a terrible towel. I'd like to take that to a Steelers game and wave it around. See how fast I got beat up. Okay, oh brother, I can't look at this anymore. It's, this video is already gonna be too long. And uh, But I'm just such a sucker for these old papers. You know, it's like a bygone era and it seems like things were so much more fun back then when people had boss sleepwear like this. I love those 70s house coats that women used to wear, you know, with her little cup of tea. Only thing missing is her hair dryer bonnet. My goodness, wow, that was a trip down memory lane, 1976. Loved looking at that flyer. Let's see what else is down here. Almond extract, okay, she was a baker. I guess she liked to bake. Well, let's see what was in the news. Here's some actual news. Oh, look, here's the Nevada State Journal from Thursday, September 30th, 1976. Oh, I was one week old when this paper came out. I was born September 22nd. Look what was going on when I was one week old. Okay, if you're into sports, Count couldn't believe he pitched a no-hitter. Muhammad Ali was doing some kind of press conference. Pooh brings his campaign to Reno. Oh my God, Winnie the Pooh, shut up. He's running for office. I don't know if you can tell from the picture, he's wearing an Uncle Sam hat and it's Winnie the Pooh and there's all these kids hugging him and it says, Winnie the Pooh won some votes in Reno Wednesday. An alternative to none of these. It says 100 supporters braved the chill air of 7 a.m. Wednesday to greet the first presidential candidate to visit Reno, Winnie the Pooh. The candidate was mobbed. The children were much more enthusiastic about their candidate than many parents. Oh my God, who did parents have to vote for in 76? Was like, Gerald Ford, who did he run against? I don't even know. Oh God, I would have voted for Winnie the Pooh too. Uh oh, looks like the Native Americans were getting the runaround back then too. Tribe fears sewer plant expansion. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that they went ahead and expanded that sewer plant. <laughs> That's not funny. State gaming executive will resign. Oh, okay, I wonder why. Oh, what else do we got in here? This was this is when I was one week old, guys. Nine days old. Oh, I had so much promise ahead of me. 
You know, and who can blame me for being born into a world like this? I mean, it must have looked like everything lay ahead. Handguns for $49.95? Golly, it's a good thing they didn't give me a time machine the day I was born, so I would have seen how messed up things would have turned out. I would have crawled back into the womb. Just kidding, things are actually awesome. I mean, I'm out here on this beautiful day exploring. Can't complain. This is a little flower. Oh no, maybe we, we should put this with a dress. You know, she could have tucked this behind her ear when she wore this dress. I'll put that in there. All right, so I just basically kind of poked through all that rubble there where the milk jugs are. Looks like there's another shirt down here. That must have been the hubby. Capistrano. Oh gosh, I'll hang it up over here. Then there's another mattress over there. I guess if you had company, somebody else could have slept. I mean, this is a very rough cabin. I mean, just to quickly pan around the infrastructure. There's a refrigerator. There was probably some kind of very bare basic kitchen here and then a little pantry, which we'll check out. But all of this makes me think this might not have been like a permanent residence. Maybe they just came up here on the weekends or something. I don't know. It's hard to say though. I mean, why would you bring a fancy dress to come up here on the weekends? <laughs> Your Navy captain vest. Oh my God. Interesting. I just noticed there is still glass in the window. Both windows have glass and that back door is sealed up very tightly. So when we leave, I'll close this front door and that ought to keep this place, well, at least from getting any more damaged. Okay, anyway, back around this way. So that's the pile of cat food bags. Uh, I mean, there's a couple more newspapers down here. Oh, look, she took notes on this one. Oh, it was her, look, this is her uh, medical notes. Dangers, of, the article is dangers of fungal disease detailed. And then she wrote at the top, med x three drops water or juice three times daily and she wrote yeast and cap oh, i can't read what that says capristatin nice statin oh my goodness i wonder if she was suffering oh and the date on this one is from 1987 so she was here until 87 maybe she was having some health issues all right well there's a refrigerator back here and it's interesting because there's some little stickers stuck on it. Look at that. You are what you eat, a turkey. I feel like I had that sticker when I was a kid. Wow, that's old. A little Halloween or Thanksgiving sticker. Jolly Holidays. She was into the holidays. Electrolux. Wow, look at the emblem on this fridge. That's cool. Oh, look what's stuck up on the fridge though. Look here. It's three hearts cut out of brown paper bags. Looks like a kid would have made it. Oh no. Oh, brother. <laughs> I got to step closer and oh, it's just not pleasant. I just feel like this could give us some real clues as to who lived here. Grandma. Oh, that says grandma and that says Diane. What is that? Oh, grandpa. Grandpa, grandma, and Diane. Oh no. So I'm guessing Rita was somebody's grandma and maybe her, well, maybe they're raising the grandkid up here or the grandkid used to just come visit him. Wow. Hmm. And then look here, this is pure 80s. This definitely dates this place to the 1980s. Little kid made a drawing of Ms. Pac-Man. You can tell it's Ms. Pac-Man by the bow on her head. Eating one of the little ghosts, you know, in the Pac-Man game. All right, well, let's see if there's anything inside the fridge. I'm scared to look. Oh, well, not really. I mean, there's a juicer. Oh, this has some information on it. What do you suppose this says? Oh my goodness, what? I'm not kidding, you guys. I think this tells the whole history of the people who lived in this cabin. I'm gonna take it outside to read it because I don't wanna be in here breathing this poo smell, a hint of Iris. Uh, all right, hold on, I'll read this and then I'll give you guys uh, the TLDR version. That's too long, didn't read. Basically, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Okay, wow, this is a bonanza. I've never been exploring a place like this, making up a story about who might have lived here, and then found the whole story written on a piece of folder in the refrigerator. This is unbelievable. And well, now that I know the story, I feel kind of bad making up these hypotheticals about a cross-dressing guy with a perm. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll just go ahead and read you everything it says. If you're bored by this kind of thing, well, you've probably already quit watching the video or you can just fast forward through this part. Okay, so basically it says, nothing of value inside, only memories, especially those of Tom Donahue's family. Wife Rita, children Donnie, Dorothy, Dan, Doug, and Debbie. For a debt, Tom's brother, an attorney in Bakersfield, took possession of this working mine known as the Golden Ghost in about 1959. Tom, who'd sold his turkey ranch in Ramona, California about that time, took over the active operation for his brother, moving the three boys up first to help manage and work in the mine. In a few months, Rita and Debbie arrived. 
Basically, they lived here from 1959 until 1988. Holy cow, so we were pretty close uh, with the date on that. Remember we saw that thing from 1987? It says the kids uh, had to take the school bus down the seven mile Jeep trail to the highway and then continue about 12 miles to the closest town to go to the elementary school. That's not that far. They had to go about 20 miles to elementary school, but then for high school, they stayed in Ramona working the mine in the summers. They were occasionally snowed in and with winter storms. Oh, I believe it. I mean, we're up here at Joshua Tree Elevation, so... Well, where there's Joshua Trees, there's usually snow. Tom, who was always an excellent derner, and then it says in parentheses, witchery, became a superb prospector with up to 80 plus claims and received several hundred thousand dollars for his claims in Gabs, Nevada. In finding water, oh, I guess that's what they mean by witchery, a derner, is that what you call somebody who's a, a water witch? And that sounds weird, but you, they walk around with that Y-shaped stick and they can somehow tell where there's water under the ground. I think, I know it sounds like bunk, but I feel like there might actually be some science to it. I'm not sure. I mean, comment below if you know otherwise. Anyway, this dude was a water witch, Tom. It says, in finding water, Tom could tell you how deep and a good approximation of the flow rate. Rita, a devout Catholic, see, knew she was religious, would could work miracles with next to nothing up here. And then it says, R.I.P. Donnie, Dorothy, Dan, Doug, Rita, and Tom. Only Debbie survives in the town that I just passed through. Wow, that is wild. And so there's another version of this written on the back in Sharpie, but there's less details in it, so I read... This one looks like it was written by a woman. So I thought it would be more interesting to read this. The one up in Sharpie, though, is dated uh, 2012. So about 10 years ago, somebody came up here and took the time to leave this history in the refrigerator. How about that? Opened the refrigerator to get a cold beer and came out with a life story. So we know that Tom and Rita lived in this cabin with their kids, Donnie, Dorothy, Dan, Doug, and Debbie. But why does it say he brought the, it says the dad came up with the three boys. So that would be Donnie, Dan, and Doug. And then it says Rita and Debbie arrived later. What about Dorothy? When did Dorothy show up? They forgot. What happened to Dorothy? What about Dorothy? All right, I'm going to put this back in the fridge for the next. I mean, I can't imagine very many people come up here, but if they do, they're in for a treat. God, I don't know if I'll ever find anything as cool as that in any of my travels. Oh, look at this cool old matchbook from Inyo Diesel and Auto Electric. Oh, it's so dark in here. I better turn this flash on. Here's another old uh, shopping bag from Safeway. Oh my God, look. Fight inflation and save. Copyright 1980. Oh wow, so everybody complaining about inflation today. Huh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. It's interesting though, because this bag, it says Roger Donahue. So it looks to me like some kid wrote that on here. And so they must've had grandkids, uh, Roger being one of them. And so he would come up here and stay with his grandparents. Oh, wow. I don't know, now that I actually know the names of the people who lived here, it's not as much fun to go poking through their stuff. I kind of, makes me feel kind of gross, you know? more it's, somehow it feels more invasive but hey it's, i'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this up real quick while i'm in here oh look on the side of the fridge oh look she had some labels from some homemade jars of jam and jelly somebody made her look there's still magnets on the fridge a little light bulb a little teddy bear with no head well now he's got a head <laughs> and then look at this put a warning on your door that even criminals can't ignore Oh, I see these are funny, no trespassing signs. Please unload gun and remove ski mask before entering. That's funny. Never mind the dog, beware of the owner. Notice, anyone found here at night will be found here in the morning. Oh gosh. I guess that predates the we don't dial 911 that you see nowadays. Oh, look, there's a uh, Rita's Jesus poster. Oh my God, that's a nice poster of the of the Lord, our Lord and Savior. That shouldn't just be crumpled up in a box. I feel like that needs to be in a place of prominence somewhere. I gotta hang that up somewhere. Mm, let me put it on the bed for now. Figure out what to do with it later. Oh no, look at this. Big Easter week protest in Mercury. Actor Martin Sheen was among the more than 30 anti-nuclear protesters celebrating a Holy Week Eucharist during a Wednesday demonstration here near the entrance to the restricted Nevada test site. That's wild. I didn't realize Martin Sheen was a big anti-nuclear protester. Huh, I learn something new every day. Ugh, all right. Oh, uh, we're at the final part of this cabin, the pantry. I'm gonna have to close the door here, which I don't like to do because I need fresh air, but oh my goodness, this is 
It's just like they stepped out yesterday. Well, maybe not yesterday, but about a year ago. There's their little first aid supplies. Here's the medicine cabinet, NyQuil. Avon Moonwind Perfume Talc. Oh, that's probably what Rita wore. Oh my goodness. And then here's some old, more, oh my God, you can smell that Avon Moonwind. Woo, it actually, it has a really weirdly nostalgic smell. I wish you guys could smell this. First of all, it has a <coughs> <coughs> awesome label of a lady with a greyhound. Look at that. <coughs> I hope it's the Avon Moonwind and not the Hantavirus that's making me cough. But it does. It has a kind of a sweet powdery smell. It smells like, like a grandma would smell. It's nice. Oh, they had marshmallow cream, Pero. That's that, isn't that that fake, uh, what do you call that, chicory coffee? Instant hot beverage. So I guess, yeah, these are all like fake coffee substitutes with no caffeine. Look how they used to spell caffeine without the E at the end. Okay, so I have that in common with her. Neither one of us drank caffeine. Hawaiian white ginger guest soap. Oh, she took this soap from like a cruise she went on or something and she saved it in this little box all these years. She never even used it. Never once used this soap. I wonder where she went. Oh, Avon. She just ordered it from Avon. So she got it for the guest bathroom, but what? There's not even a real bathroom, let alone a guest bathroom. Oh my God, there's still peanut butter in this jar. Holy cow, look at this old Peter Pan peanut butter and it still has peanut butter in it. Uh, laundry soap. I wonder how she did laundry up here. Into old empty cans, dry milk. Okay, just some supplies laid in, you know, just the food that they would need. All right, I'm gonna go outside because I feel like I've thoroughly covered the inside of this cabin and I wanna quit risking hantavirus. Uh, if they moved here in 1959 and the kids went to the elementary school, let's just say the, so the kids were probably all about the same age or a little bit older than my mom. So Rita and Tom must have been the same age as my grandparents. Hmm, we put this together. So if the kids were all, I would say maybe 10 years older than my mom-ish, five years older than my mom, and they're all already passed away, that's not a good sign, man. Maybe, well, maybe they didn't have a good diet here. Who can say? And only Debbie is left. So Debbie, I would guess, is probably right around the same age as my mom. And as of 2012, she was still alive and living not too far from here, wow. That was wild. <laughs> All right, well, I washed my hands off as best as I could using uh, what I had in my car. And I also came in here and tried to fix this cabin up the best I could, but there's really no point because it's so trashed. But I did hang our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the wall where he should be. Yeah, I tried not to be too sacrilegious by poking this nail right through his forehead. Because I know Jesus is a little bit sensitive about where nails get poked through his body, if you know what I mean. So he's got a better place there now. I hung the dress up next to the pocketbook. And then finally, I tried to reassemble the doorknob mechanism on this door so that I could close it, but I don't have all the parts. And to be honest, I think they're all rusted and messed up anyways, but this should be enough to where we can at least close the door. Wow, oh, oh, brother, I guess that was all for nothing. All right, I'll put the doorknob back where I found it. At least I tried. Oh man, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed exploring this little lonely cabin. And I love the fact that the history was in the refrigerator of all the places to keep your family history. Love it. And I love the fact that the mine was called the Golden Ghost. What a great name for a mine. What a great name for a YouTube video. <laughs> wow, great location, 10 out of 10. Would definitely come back, would definitely recommend. <sighs> if you do come back here though, just uh, please remember to have some respect for the people who lived here because now we know all of their names and all of their histories and well, most of them have already passed away. So just keep that in mind.